hey friends welcome back to the channel so happy to see you guys here with me one more time so I don't know if it's been happening to you guys but I know it happens in this house all the time we have totally neglected our bananas and my husband went to pick up the bunch of them and this is the mess we got now they're super ripe and super delicious but we absolutely have to use them today and I am done with banana bread I mean don't want to have another slice so today we're making something way more delicious and we're going to be doing a little bit of homemade ice cream and it's going to be great we're having banana ice cream so friends we're going to start by putting our pan on the heat now i'm using a this is a portable burner that i absolutely love using and just to kind of get out there and let you guys know ahead of time it is perfectly safe to use indoors because it is butane fuel instead of propane propane would not be safe to use inside so please be cautious do not use a propane burner inside the one i'm using most definitely butane so we're going to get started by adding three quarters of a cup of heavy cream and three quarters of a cup of whole milk to a small saucepan now i'm going to save the heavy cream here on the side because I am going to use a little bit more of that in just a moment. And to this saucepan, I'm going to add half a cup each of white sugar and light brown sugar. And we're just going to stir that together and let that come up to temperature, become nice and warm and melt that sugar. So while that's happening, I'm gonna use the same bowl that I had the sugar in and I'm gonna crack two large eggs into that. And I'm just gonna whisk these eggs until they become nice and fluffy. Perfect. So now all I'm going to do is using this small ladle and whisking the eggs simultaneously, I'm going to pour in a like very slow drizzle of this warm cream mixture to temper the eggs. So the reason we want to do this is just to prevent the eggs from seizing and essentially becoming just sweet and scrambled eggs. You want to temper them slowly so that you can cook them safely and create that beautiful ice cream base. Perfect, so that feels absolutely warm to the touch on the bottom. So we can go ahead and pour these into the saucepan with the rest of the cream and milk mixture. Okay, set that aside. And we're just gonna cook this ever so slowly over low heat to allow it to thicken up. Now you don't want it too thick, but you don't want it runny. So I'm going to show you guys exactly what we're looking for here. I'm 
going to switch to a wooden spoon instead of a whisk because we don't want to incorporate any more air into that. Okay, perfect. So we've reached that perfect spot where it's just slightly starting to thicken and you can tell because it coats that spoon, see, just like that. And if you very carefully run your finger through the center, yum, you, it keeps the line and it doesn't flood it. So you know you've got a good thickened cream. So to that, we're gonna add one whole cup of heavy cream now I do this separately just because it helps to cool it down. But still gives us that really good creme anglaise base for our ice cream. Okay, a splash of vanilla extract. Perfect. Might be a little bit unconventional, but I like to add a good pinch of salt. Helps to balance the sweetness and bring out flavors. And then here's where it gets really, really fun. We're bringing this bowl right back into play. And we're gonna take about three of these bananas. And we're just gonna mash these guys up. I always remove the little stringy parts so nobody wants those little strings when they're biting into anything. Perfect. So now when it's nice and kind of like loose like that, Now we can add it in. So, just gonna scoop it in there. Work in that mashed banana. Wonderful, so now I'm just going to transfer that literally right back into this bowl and we're gonna place it into the fridge to chill. For about an hour. Oh, she's pretty. Okay friends, so I did not forget these two bananas that are just kind of sitting here half peeled. We are gonna take these guys and we're gonna dice them up so we can pop them into the freezer. And when we're working the, we're churning the ice cream in the ice cream maker, once it's starting to set, we can add the chunks of the banana into it and you'll have like good chunks of fruit throughout the ice cream. Okay, so just kind of spread these out on a plate. And because you're making this at home, you can add whatever you want to it. Some, I mean, at one of my favorite ice creams growing up was the Chunky Monkey ice cream from Ben and Jerry's. And that was like a banana based ice cream with chocolate chunks in it and walnuts. You can add all of that stuff to it if you so choose. We're just trying to keep to this one simple today, just banana ice cream. And then if you don't want to add like chocolate or anything to it, but you still want it, you could always use some of that like hard shell that 
you can put over ice cream that would be super delicious over the top of this okay perfect so i'm gonna pop the chopped bananas into the freezer and then we can add those in when the ice cream's turning all right friends so we've got the insert for our ice cream maker here and i do have a mess i want to acknowledge it here on the countertop it, my husband did remind me that we can't have dessert for dinner so we have to have dinner for dinner and i'm going to be sharing a recipe i found online i really want to give it a try and i'm going to be sharing my experience with you guys here so let's get our beautiful ice cream base that's nice and cold now in here that churn let's get started on the sauce tonight for dinner we're gonna be having an Asian style dinner and we're gonna be having dragon chicken with sauteed noodles so let's get started on the sauce for the dragon chicken friends we're gonna start our sauce off first and we start that by combining a quarter cup of soy sauce a quarter cup of ketchup with three tablespoons of honey two tablespoons of oyster sauce, and then one or two tablespoons, depending on your taste, of an Asian chili sauce, kind of like a sambal olek, and I probably said that wrong, please forgive me. Um, if you have Chinese black vinegar, you would add a tablespoon of Chinese black vinegar. If you don't, half of a tablespoon of balsamic and half a tablespoon of rice vinegar. And then add one tablespoon of sesame oil and one and a half teaspoons of cornstarch and set that aside. You're then gonna trim up your chicken, remove any fat, cube it up into small pieces. I'm using chicken thighs for this recipe, but you can feel free to use chicken breast if you prefer. You just wanna trim off any of the bits that may not cook up as well when you're frying it up. Um, we're gonna marinate it very easily by combining one egg and then a tablespoon of soy and then half a teaspoon each of ginger powder, garlic powder, onion powder, and cayenne and set that aside. I'm gonna take advantage of this moment that the ice cream is coming together, it's looking nice and frozen, and I'm gonna add some of the frozen banana chunks to it and let that work its way through. Once those pieces have kind of swirled through and incorporated, then we can go ahead and remove the ice cream from the ice cream maker. <laughs> Okay, so now our ice cream is absolutely done. Look at how beautiful and rich and creamy that is. What? Amazing. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this plastic container. I like these like Tupperware containers. I get these at the Dollar Tree to be honest. And I love these because they have a lid. And I've seen a bunch of videos online where People use like um, loaf pans. I don't like that. Loaf pans don't have a lid. Okay. Push that back. Space. Here we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Just like that. I'm gonna scrape the sides, making sure we've got every last little bit of it. Okay, let me grab a spoon.
here we go. We have this creamy, delicious banana ice cream with chunks of banana in there. Oh, it's gonna be so good, especially with those strawberry brioche buns. All right, let me get this into the freezer so that it continues to set and keep working on there. Friends, I'm boiling the noodles now. We're gonna end up straining these and setting them aside and using them for the stir fried noodle side dish. Um, I'm using a ramen style noodle that I picked up at the store. If you can't find those, sometimes I've been able to use an angel hair pasta and I make that work. To bread the chicken, you're gonna combine half of a cup of flour with a quarter cup of cornstarch. The cornstarch makes it extra crispy. And you're just gonna place all the chicken into that flour and cornstarch mixture toss it around make sure it's fully coated i use canola oil to fry this you could use a peanut oil or vegetable oil some neutral flavored oil that you have on hand um, i would not fry this in olive oil though because the, sh the flavor would just be too strong you want something really neutral so i fry it in uh, batches in canola oil So friends, let me get this out of the way just a little bit in my least bit of humbleness. You heard me correctly. Absolutely lack of humble, not humble at all. Look at this beautiful bok choy that I grew. I mean, come on, I'm like legitly really excited about this. Look at that, it's beautiful. And to be honest, I grew it from seeds that I harvested off of bok choy that I planted like two years ago. So I mean like, I'm farming. I just wanna say it, I'm a not really, not really, but like maybe a little bit. Let's give you a little bit. Okay. So here's what I'm gonna do with this bok choy. I am gonna cut the bottoms off here, take the cores out, and we're going to rough chop it because I'm going to saute this as part of our, oops, there's still a little bit of flour left in there, whatever. Okay, so this is gonna wilt down and cook down and be part of our stir fried noodles. Instead of using like a cabbage, I'm using the bok choy that we grew in our garden. I'm so excited. Like, that's how you know you're winning, right? When you can go outside, pick something, come back and use it, that's the whole point. All right, so, huh, oh, okay, here we go. Let's, where did I put them? Let's get started with our noodles. We're eating dinner late today, because honestly, I forgot about dinner while I was making like banana ice cream and strawberry brioche rolls and stuff. I mean, I completely forgot about dinner. No big deal, it'll be fine. We we'll eat a little bit late. Worst things have happened in this world. So I'm just wiping down some baby, oh no, portobello mushrooms. Oh, this guy's making a mess. Leave it to him to be complex, of course he is. Okay, so I'm just wiping these guys down a little bit, making sure they're not like super dirty. Okay. Clean my counters up. There we go. Now, these noodles are gonna be extremely simple. Okay, got my pan heating up. And I'm just going to give the mushrooms a rough chop. Okay. So now, I'm going in with just a touch of canola oil. Use whichever one you prefer. I just happen to have canola oil on hand, so that's what I'm gonna be using today. And toss our mushrooms in there. Okay. 
hit them with a little bit of black pepper or a lot of it it's up to you And we're just gonna saute this lightly. You guys see that? Let me move this over. That's the best part of this burner. It goes where you go. It's there when you need it, where you need it, whenever you need it. I'll do that. Okay, so we're gonna let these saute. I get a nice little bit of brown to them. I just wanna make sure they're in a good flat level. Here, there we go. Okay. We're gonna let those guys brown for just a minute and then we're gonna go in with our bok choy and our green onion. This is gonna wilt down quite a bit. We're just gonna keep sauteing it. So for the sauce for the noodles, we're going in with two teaspoons of white sugar. I'm gonna add, if I can get it open, okay. I'm going to add about a quarter cup of soy sauce. And just kind of stir it to dissolve the sugar in there. Okay. 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 So about two teaspoons of oyster sauce. I love oyster sauce. It like balances everything out. Then about, eh, what's left of this? So about a tablespoon of rice vinegar. And about a teaspoon of sesame oil. Now this is just the way I normally make the noodles. They come out pretty tasty like this. And it's just a simple sauce. Finally done with this rice vinegar. Okay, beautiful. Let's turn the heat back on on the noodles or on the vegetables for the noodles. Get those off. Now, I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of water just because I wanna make sure that it's nice and loose so it coats every noodle without being like excessively saucy. So now we are going in with our cooked noodles. These are just the ones that they had available. Sometimes they had like the white, the pad thai noodles, the wide ones, the thin ones. They just happen to have these, which are more like ramen noodles. This is what it is. Sometimes, sometimes I have to use like angel hair pasta because that's what's available. And you know what I say? Do the best with what's available because sometimes we don't get to choose what the stores have. Now I'm a big fan of the kimchi mart that's near our home. If you're in the South Florida area, I recommend it. I love that place it's where I get my dim sum. If you guys have never had dim sum, I'll show you guys. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't make it from scratch. No way, that takes so much skill that there is no way 
that I could make that from scratch, at least not yet, in my culinary adventure. But I'll get there eventually. Okay, these guys are done. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat because they're gonna finish soaking up all of that sauce and that yummy mushroom flavor and bok choy flavor. So we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna work on our chicken. I'm gonna throw just a tiny little bit of oil in there. And we are gonna go in with our vegetables. So I have chopped up just into some rough cubes, some red bell pepper, green bell pepper, one whole white onion, some about a tablespoon of minced garlic, and about a teaspoon of grated ginger. All right, also to that, we are gonna add about a quarter cup of cashews. Oh yeah, that's all good. Okay. Pick that up. I always add a little bit more onion than pepper, but that's a personal preference. Oh my God, it smells so good. Okay, and then right as soon as you add your sauce, go right in with that chicken. Do it. I definitely planned on leftovers, like you can tell. There's gonna be leftovers. Oh, it smells so ridiculously delicious. Mm. It kind of reminds me of like a Hunan beef or like a Hunan chicken. It smells great. Okay, now turn the heat off. That is ready to go. And then one last thing just to finish it off. So it's extra delicious and extra beautiful. We're gonna take those green onions and sprinkle them over the top. Boom, and she's done. All right, family, it is definitely time to eat dinner. Sorry, it's a little late guys, cause I forgot to make dinner. But I will make up for it with this extra tasty dinner. Okay guys, let's give this a quick taste test. Just make sure it's safe for everybody to eat. Mm. Oh, that's actually really, really good. Ooh, a little bit of back heat. Oh friends, so good. That's amazing. We're gonna sit down and have dinner and then I'll show you guys how dessert turned out. All right friends, so we finished our dinner and it was delicious. And now it's time for some ice cream. So we have our banana ice cream here. couple scoops okay give 
give that a taste test. Oh, that's actually really good. I don't even want to play games. I don't want to toot my own horn today. Machete? Yeah. But like for real, toot toot, okay? Here you go. This is the, uh, the nice portion? Yes. I hope you enjoy it. It's good. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. What is that, a banana? Mm-hmm. And I have a big taste. That's good. Just like I gave you. Yeah, you're gonna have a spoonful. It's okay, I'm on my way. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today in the kitchen. It's been kind of an adventure. Um, trying to test out new recipes we've never made before. And honestly, it was a win on all of them. I'll link the ones that I found online, like for the dragon chicken and for the stir fried noodles down below, so you guys can try those out as well. That's gonna be added to our new roster. Definitely the dragon chicken is gonna be added to our roster of like Foods are going to be, you know, interchanging here and there because it was very delicious. So super, super happy with that one. The banana ice cream is spectacular. If you guys want to give that a try as well, it's been a great day. Thank you so much for joining us, for being a part of our day. Don't forget to give me a like, thumbs up, subscribe, and comment. I love to hear from you guys every day, all the time. It's Amazing. Have a great one. Take care of yourselves.